the politics. Mm. Now, you're promising not to increase the rates of income tax, but isn't that a worthless promise? Because you did that in the last manifest manifesto, but you did increase them. You fiddled around with the tax bans, which put people into higher tax, and you're now using national insurance like an income tax. So it's meaningless. Well, look, we faced the biggest international economic crisis that we faced uh, in a generation. And in response to that, we did have to take unprecedented measures such as introducing the 50p uh, top rate of tax. But the plans we're putting forward are costed. We know where we are economically and we know that we can guarantee to reduce but the deficit in half in four years. But, 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 but what but, this... But, but, Ram, you didn't say in the last manifesto we will not change the rates of income tax unless we have a, an economic crisis. You just said we won't change the rates. Now, given that you fiddled about with them and the people are paying a lot more income tax and NI now, why should we believe your promise in 2010? We, we, we weren't able to anticipate the international economic crisis, just as every other country wasn't able to anticipate it. Because you really it. believed in no more boom or bust? No, no, no. Hold, hold on, hold on, Andrew. At the bottom what, of the what would people rather that we had done to actually allow the deficit to spiral out but of control? you did control? break your promise. No, no, we, we made clear there were unprecedented circumstances and we had to act. But what this manifesto is about is about securing the recovery, continuing to improve our public services. What we're not going to do is what the Conservatives are doing is spraying around like confetti tax pledges and spending pledges because it won't work, it doesn't add up and it's unsustainable. But we also want to support uh, family living circumstances. Now, you've ruled out, though, as I say, you didn't uh, live up to your promise last time and increase in income tax, uh, income tax rates, but you've left the door open to raise VAT. So that could happen. No, we're very clear that we've got plans that will enable us to reduce the deficit in half over four years. If you look at the track record of the Labour Party in government compared to the Conservatives, VAT has not been our vehicle of choice. It has been for the Conservatives. But you've not ruled it out. No, no, no. But, but we do not believe that we need to implement a VAT ri rise to meet our pledges and to cut the deficit in half. Could, could you explain to our viewers why a lot of the public service reforms you're now proposing have been precisely the kind of reforms that Mr Brown opposed when Mr Blair tried to do it. No, I, I don't think that's true. I mean, to take really? one example, foundation hospitals... He were... opposed foundation no, no, hospitals. No, 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 he didn't. He was Excuse in the... me, I've got a 50-page so, paper so, sorry, from Gordon sorry, sorry. Brown that opposed foundation hospitals. He circulated to the whole of the Cabinet. Gordon, Gordon Brown was in the Cabinet and was Chancellor when we secured the foundation hospitals. But, but you know, th this election is about crucial choices. It's also about people's family living circumstances. If you look at the detail of our manifesto, pledges such as increasing the minimum wage in line with earnings, guaranteeing that someone who comes off of benefit and goes into work will be £40 a week better off. The commitment to support first-time buyers, crucial in my constituency, the commitment to 10,000 council houses additionally each year. These measures will make a real difference to people up and down the country. Though the country's short of 3 million houses, so 10,000 going to make much of a difference. This Cadbury law to protect British business from foreigners, I mean, it's a nonsense, isn't it? Uh, it's only going to apply to utility companies uh, deemed to be of national interest. So it wouldn't have pre prevented the takeover of Cadbury by Kraft. Do you accept that? I, I think it depends on the circumstances. What well, we is are... Cadbury a national interest? Uh, uh, what, what, what we're saying is that for major infrastructure yeah. industries, yeah. there so, has to be so a better balance. I understand and, that, and, and we're but it's saying... not Cadbury. Uh, well, it... it... Yeah, it depends on the circumstances. Well, Cadbury's is national infrastructure. Well, no, no, I, I think it's unlikely to have prevailed in those circumstances. But to some of these critical decisions, what we're saying is that there needs to be a two-thirds decision on, uh, amongst shareholders to support a takeover, and I think that's right sure. in shifting the balance. So can we just be honest, though, and it would not have affected the takeover I, I think it's unlikely to have right, affected okay. it, but, but on, well, on some of these key changes... No, no, I understand it what it's done. Um, why have you bottled out of privatising the Royal Mail? Is that because you're now in hock to the unions? No, because I think it's the right thing to do. I not think, to privatise it? Not to privatise it. If so, you took an opinion poll, Andrew, amongst my constituents... But a year ago, think, your, part, your government's policy was to privatise No, no, we it. were looking at how we secured extra funding for the post office. But, but what, oh. what we decided, after consultation, was that we needed to retain it in the public sector. If you consulted my constituents, okay. I reckon about 80% of them would back the post office remaining in the public sure. sector, unlike the Conservative Party. Liam Fox, a lot of these public uh, service reforms, public sector reforms, are 
Not that different from what you're proposing. Um, some of them are very similar um, in the past even. The foundation hospitals, for example, to what the Conservatives proposed back way back in the early 2000s. We obviously want to have a look at these. But the one thing you didn't mention about the NHS is something which I think a lot of people will find offensive, which is Labour using an NHS territory to launch actually this today, quite clearly in, in, uh, against the rules set by the Cabinet Office, which says political meetings should not be held in NHS premises. This idea that the NHS is a personal plaything for the Labour Party, sending out leaflets to cancer patients, trying to get GPs to sign up to their manifesto, I think is quite disgraceful. Liam, and Liam, what we've Very done briefly. is to cut waiting times from two years when you were in power to 18 weeks today. That's let, the difference in the, let me in the sliding, And we're sliding down the cancer Bill, survival Bill rating list. No, we're not. Thank you very much for that. Now, we promised we'd put some of your emails to our special guest today, Liam Fox. So here we go. Liam, we've got a few for you. This from Isabel uh, Mullaney in County Durham. I'm listening to Liam Fox. Com some of your emails to our special guest today, Liam Fox. So here we go. Liam, we've got a few for you. This from Isabel uh, Mullaney in County Durham. I'm listening to Liam Fox commenting on the proposed tax allowance. And once again, it appears that my two married working daughters who both have children will again miss out. Why aren't you rewarding working couples? Well, as I said, and as David Cameron said, it's a start. But we'll be very limited because of the financial train crash that we'll inherit to go as far as we would like in helping families in that position. But you would like to? Of course we would in like the future. to. Is it a priority? It, it, very much, it very much is part of the Conservative way of thinking. Now, this from Geoffrey Dammont. Does anybody remember the outcry from the Conservatives and businessmen saying it would be a disaster with thousands thrown out of work and small businesses collapsing if the minimum wage was introduced? This, of course, referring to your opposition to the national insurance rise. Well, of course, if you look now at the economic position where Labour promised you know, full employment in every region, they had all these measures that were going to create that. But the, do, you agree, do you agree that businesses, there was an outcry about the minimum wage being introduced and now it seems businesses have managed with that. Isn't that the same? This is the questioner really asking you. Isn't this the same with your opposition to the national insurance? Increase? No, national insurance is a tax on jobs. It will wreck the recovery. We've got, we've got people signed up for our campaign it will who wreck employ the recovery. Large, very large numbers of people. Wreck L the Liam, recovery. Liam, Liam, when, when the minimum would you like to change came, that then? verb from wreck to maybe... Hold it back a wee bit. It will certainly harm the recovery. Ah. And if harming the recovery, so harming the recovery is not what okay. the government is meant to do. It's just, meant just to just encourage recovery in this country. Just as you said, Liam, just as country. you said, that a the minimum wage would cost two million jobs, and it All didn't. Right. We and increased jobs as a okay. result okay, of that. Okay, we have to and leave it there. You can <laughs> see <laughs> that campaign is underway. We thank all of our guests for being with us today on the first full day of the campaign when Labour launched its manifesto, promising more Blairite-style public service reform.